Welcome to our broadcast tonight. Jerry Adams, head of the Sinn Féin, the political arm of the Irish Republican Army. He is in New York for the second time in seven months after being barred from this country for 20 years. And actor Tim Robbins, his latest movie is called The Shawshank Redemption. We begin with Northern Ireland. After 25 years of violence and little reason for hope, the IRA announced a complete cessation of military operations last month. Jerry Adams is in the middle of a two-week tour of the United States, during which he has reiterated his call for a united Ireland without a British role, and I'm pleased to have him back at this table. Welcome. Thank you, Charlie. I'm very glad to be back. It's good to have you back. We had a lot of talk after you were here for the last, last time. Did that visit to the United States, uh, how long ago, six months ago, when was February. it? February. Uh, make a difference in when you got back to Northern Ireland in uh, terms of what the IRA announced? Absolutely. I think it was, uh, if you like, the, the American piece of the jigsaw. And uh, when President Clinton gave me the visa to come here, he sent a very encouraging, a very positive, a politically symbolic signal back to Ireland, back to the British government, and back to the broad nationalist family and Republican family in Ireland. And can I say something else so that you may be inter interested in as a broadcaster? You will recall that the last time I was here, that my voice could not be heard on British television. Right. Now, it's no accident that this time before I come back, the British changed that. And they changed it because programs like this and broadcasters like you were amazed at the bizarre yeah. craziness of an actor's voice uh, being used, and the British were embarrassed. And that's why that was changed. What else? I want to get to what caused you uh, and the IRA to change its policy. But what other changes have taken place since the dramatic announcement? What's changed? What is, what's well, opened up for you? Well, could I, could I just sketch out very briefly the, 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 you know, the, the build-up to sure. the announcement? And essentially, I, I spoke earlier of an American piece of the jigsaw. John Hume, who is the leader of the SDLP, right. and myself got together. And if you like, we had a consensus, which was a, a, a consensus among nationalists in the north of Ireland. And then uh, Irish Prime Minister Albert Reynolds came in behind that. So you had Nationalist Ireland and then Irish America and the broader American op opinion added the package which created the conditions which allowed, I believe, the IRA to take what was a very courageous and bold step. We still haven't got peace. I mean, the IRA, the IRA announcement is a month old. Hmm. Since then, a number of Catholics have been killed. There are upwards of 30,000 heavily armed combat troops in an area which is slightly smaller than the state of Maine. Uh, we have bomb attacks on my offices in Belfast. We have had uh, bomb attacks on uh, the homes of Sinn Féin families and on other Catholics. The weekend I left Ireland, there was a mass murder attack uh, against Catholics in the north of Belfast, and within the last 36 hours there was another uh, attempted killing. So we have had the IRA with its complete cessation of military operations. We have had not got uh, a response from the British or from their allies in the Loyalist Escorts. On the positive side, we have had an expectation, a hope within Ireland that we are going to move from the threshold of a new era into a new era. Just for the benefit of the people who did not read the announcement, um, why, after 20 plus years and all those killings, did the IRA change its policy? Well, one would have to go into some detail. Uh, I have always been off of you, and I said this 15 years ago, that there were no military victories. We have a political problem. It needs a political solution. What the British did was to militarize the problem. Douglas, or sorry, Douglas Heard, who I think was here last night. Yes, he was. I met him perhaps eight years ago. When he served? When, when he was a, a, a minister. Right. And we discussed and I argued what I'm arguing now. So when you get uh, then, maybe six years ago, another British minister, a man called Peter Brook, echoing to some degree what I had said, and he said that the IRA could not be militarily defeated. That, I think, sent a very strong signal because there are only two ways to end wars. One side beats the other, one side surrenders, surrenders or there's a negotiated settlement. And Sinn Féin commenced to try and build initiatives to bring about a negotiated settlement. 
But you seem to want to say that the terrorism in Northern Ireland on the part of the IRA was in some way a response to the British Army presence, rather than simply to terrorize them into going back to London. Well, I don't want to get into, you know, which comes first, the chicken or the egg, mm. but if the British were not in Ireland, there'd be no conflict. There'd certainly be no Irish Republic in Ireland. There certainly would have not been resistance uh, going back over the, most of this uh, century. And similarly, you know, in any colonial situation, situation when you have a, an outside power, I mean, one has to ask the question, what right have the British government got to do and got to have in Ireland? What right have they to be there? Well, I'll tell you what they would say. The majority okay. of the people of Northern Ireland want them there. Well, now that's, that's what, what they would say. Well, and they would also say that you represent, you know, 10 percent, 10 percent of the people. Well, we actually represent 12.5%. Okay, 12.5. But that's what they say. And right. Douglas Heard here last night repeatedly made that point. Well, and how many people does Jerry Adams represent? Okay, well, I have to ask Mr. Heard how many people does he represent in Ireland? He doesn't represent one voter. Not one person in Ireland voted for or was given the opportunity to vote for Mr. Heard. Now, what Sinn Féin wants uh, to do is to bring our mandate, and I recognize that it's a small one, but it's a, it's a very significant one because... In the last two years, I have buried 13 members of Sinn Féin. I've buried women members. I've buried elected councillors. I've also buried seven people, the children or the partners, the wives of Sinn Féin activists. But we as soon as you say that, Jerry, as you know, I mean, there are families of, of, uh, Absolutely. of unionists Absolutely. and there's families of British soldiers who Absolutely. buried their loved ones, too, because they suffered from terrorism by the IRA. Well, you know, um, and you've got people that surround you and a part of your entourage, in a sense, who've been in prison because of terrorist acts, right? Okay, well, let me deal with that second point in a moment, okay. Charlie, if I could. You see, the reason why I made that point about Sinn Féin activists being killed was to put into focus the difficulties under which Sinn Féin labors. Because anyone who knows politics know you need activists, you need supporters, you need people to sign up. Now, to sign up for Sinn Féin was to sign a death warrant. So if you see the 12.5%, you have to see it against the background of terrorism against our party. Secondly, I acknowledged, not here in New York, but back in Belfast, the hurt which Republicans have inflicted upon others. I recognize that. Yeah. You, in I fact, apologize for the violence well, on I the want, part of the I, IRA. I want, I want to see the people of Ireland, and I have confidence in the Protestant, the Unionist people of Ireland, to join with the rest of us in creating a new Ireland. In relation to the people who are traveling with me, I'm very happy and satisfied to have such fine people traveling with me. I'm not doubting that. I'm just making the point that you're not proud to have them with you, and, and, and there's no secret of their have activities and the fact that they've been in prison well, for bombings prison. and for killing people. No but, no, but I think, Charlie, this is very important. I mean, people have seen the film in the name of the father. Right. When I met Senator Kennedy the other day, I also met Paul Hill. Paul Hill was in prison. Paul you Hill. Know, and we were saying back in Ireland. Paul Hill was married to, to Courtney Kennedy. Courtney Kennedy. One of the Robert Kennedy's four. daughter. The Birmingham Six were right. in prison. I could, I could give you numerous. The Bellamy no, Seven. I, you know, no. so, I mean, British justice sometimes finds people innocent until proven Irish. And, and American justice, too. <laughs> Sometimes there are people imprisoned in America Absolutely. who didn't. But at the same time, there are people who uh, commit terrorist acts uh, in the interest of political objectives who, in fact, go to prison because they're guilty of those terrorist acts. And, and they, co they continue to um, engage in public discourse. And, and I make that point just in that context that, that there are a lot of people who have suffered uh, violence inflicted on them on both sides, and I assume that one of the reasons we are here now at this time in history is because the IRA said, this is not working. Enough of this. We've got to find a better way. In fact, that was your message when you came here in February, was it not? Absolutely, and I think what the IRA have done has been to bring all of us in Ireland to a very critical juncture in our history, and that brought all of us to a very decisive crossroads in the history of Anglo-Irish relationships. Because here we have, as we approach the end of this century, an opportunity to build a lasting and permanent peace in our country so that no one, British soldiers, civilians, non-combatants, Irish Republican volunteers, that no one will ever have to suffer what people have suffered so far. And I think it's important to set the past behind us and to move the entire situation forward.